going on everybody so we're going to do a new video really quick and this is actually a real simple maintenance video this applies to a lot of the dd15 dd13s with the one box so this truck i have here is a 2016 freightliner cascadia there's the model it's a 125 and the code we're getting which is causing a check engine light is false code 30 3720 fmi 15 which is going to be your DPF ash clean request. Now what that means is your DPF filters will have to come out, they will have to be serviced or replaced depending on really what you wanna do. Sometimes the dealer or the book will say the filters need to be replaced, in other words, exchange. You take your old two ones and you get two new ones and install and go on from there or you can send them to be cleaned and baked. So depending on where you stand, the choice is up to you. So again, DPF ash clean request is triggering a fault code as you can see there okay we're not connected to the truck so I'm just looking at the file I'm showing you guys what it is I'm gonna show you guys we're gonna pull out the filter of the whole one box that's the way I do it you don't have to do it that way but to me it is a lot easier okay I'm just gonna go down the list really quick uh, DPF HC absorption warning so hydrocarbon absorption warning that usually means you're idling way too much uh, soot level high, that means obviously your filters were dirty. DPF zone three, soot level high, DPF zone two. So essentially a regen will clear all of those up except for the top one. A regen will not clear that up. You have to physically go in and reset that using your software. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to do that. But right now, let's just go look at what we're doing to get the filters. Continuing the video on the fault code that, re that requires the DPF to be serviced. So, what I like to do is pull the entire one box out of the truck. It's actually not that hard to do. If you look at it from the side, you're gonna have one, two, three, four bolts on one side, one, two, three, four bolts on the other, and the entire box comes out. You will have to take the harness or remove or separate the harness. Once you do that, you can pull the box out carefully. We use a transmission uh, jack. That makes it a lot easier for us. So as you can tell, DPFs have been removed. DPFs are right over there. They have been cleaned and baked. Uh, I believe Detroit says you can clean and bake them, although they recommend that they be replaced with an exchange unit. So it depends on you guys and what you want to do to, you know, to get that done. Do you want to get replacements? Do you want to clean and bake them? It's up to you guys. Obviously the cost will play a factor. So again, we're going to take these things out. We have our new clamp kits. Let me look for those wherever they are. Ah, here we go. These are our new clamp kits. Uh, you can pick these up at wherever your local dealer is. Ours happens to be Freightliner or Valley Power, which is out here in City of Industry. Give you a little idea of what you need. That is the part number. You're gonna need two of those because again, you have two DPF filters. So that is the clamp. They call it an exhaust clamp. It's a kit. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, another thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need the 10 clips and bolts. You have the clips down here, right? There's 10 of them. Four on one heat shield, and then there are six on the other. So again, you're gonna need those. We're gonna put it all back together. I'm gonna show you more or less how we do that. And I'm gonna show you how to reset the code. Okay, and so that's check this it. out really quick before you install your DPF filters. This clamp is reusable. This clamp comes new, and there is a little gasket that sits inside. That's what's included in there, okay? This you can reuse. This one, obviously, I don't recommend it. And this one you have to replace new. What you're gonna to wanna to do is simply push this over to the side, that way it allows the DLC, the, uh, sorry, the DPF to go inside. And again, the clamp, what you're gonna to wanna to do is kinda of offset it a little bit, so this way when the DP, I'm sorry, when the DPF filter kinda of rolls in, you want it to be clear, and that way you can just simply move your clamp over, tighten, adjust, or do whatever you need to do before you actually get it all in there, okay? Uh, so let's get this thing installed. I'm gonna show you the end result. Right, guys, so check that out. The first DPF is in there and it's actually not that hard to do. What you're gonna to need to try to do is make sure it's as even as possible. Not so much on this side, but on this side because there's a little open gap and that's actually what this material in here is. The material on the inside of the clamp, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what it's for. It's there to actually create that seal along with the seal that's up in the front. So remember, just make it as even as possible. It's gonna take a little bit of practice. It's not that easy when you first start. After that, it's pretty easy, okay? Also, just a little pro tip. The clamp, you wanna make sure that you give yourself enough room on the other clamp back there, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. Check this out, this is what I wanna show you. This particular clamp, you have to make sure that you give yourself enough room so that it doesn't stick up too high so that when you put the heat shield, you still have enough clearance. That's the first thing. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you have enough room 
for this one, okay? If you do it too far or too low or too high, that might not give you the clearance you need. And again, the shield on this end, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing on the other end here, okay? So you have this clamp that's already been nice and tight. When you install the second one, make sure you still have enough room here. And again, just not high enough so that you're hitting the heat shield, okay? So as you can see, it's installed. Also very important, do not forget to write down the DPF serial numbers. Okay, each one has their own number. You're gonna need that to input into the MCM. I'm gonna show you that at the end of the video. So we have the first one in, let's get the second one in and we'll go. From All right, so as you can see, DPF filters have been installed. We have our new clamps, our new gaskets, and this is what I wanted to show you. So you wanna make sure you have enough room so that the, cl that the clamps can slide in and you wanna do the same thing on the other side. So once you do that, tighten everything down. Uh, I think there's a torque setting on it. Um, I'll have to look at the book just to double check. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually put our new clips, put our heat shield on, new bolts, and it's ready to get reinstalled back into the truck. And again, do not forget to write down the serial numbers of the DPFs. And that's pretty much it. So right now we're gonna get the heat shield installed. You can see Chavo, he's gonna get that going and we're ready to go. Okay guys, so we are back and again, you're gonna see a bunch of codes there that weren't there before and that's because when you disconnect the one box and you cycle the key, you're gonna get a bunch of codes. But once you plug everything in, obviously the codes will go away except for the DPF Ash Clean request. So that's what this video is about. Again, DPF Ash Clean request. You're gonna see fault code 3720 FMI. All right, so in order to get rid of that again, filters need to be serviced, whether you replace them or whether you clean them, the choice is up to you. And what you're gonna do is plug in your software. You're gonna to go to actions. You're gonna to go to, oops, where are we at? Actions. You're gonna to go to after treatment and then you're gonna go down to where it says DPF ash accumulator. You're gonna click on that and you're gonna see that we are at volume 100%. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reset that and I'm gonna show you. So these are your two options. First one is clean or reman filter new filter due to failure. Obviously we're gonna put a clean or reman filter. And those serial numbers that I mentioned, those are very important because you need to input those, okay? Write them down. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you complete it, when it's done right. And then you're gonna go ahead and click on submit. Or in this case, it'll say set ash volume. So let me go ahead and input those numbers. Okay, and those are the serial numbers. Now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the set ash volume button on my software, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on set. It's gonna go ahead and ask you a question. It's a yes or no. We're gonna click on yes. And it's automatically gonna write and reset everything. So it's gonna write into the MCM, hey, filters have been cleaned, have been serviced, replaced, whatever the case is. It's gonna update everything. It's gonna send it to the computer. Everyone's gonna talk to each other all nice and pretty. And it's gonna say, committing changes, da, da 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 So you can see for yourself what it's doing. And at the very end, you're gonna be able to click on the close at the bottom right of the screen, which is gonna be over there. So you're gonna click on, oops, let's get that out of the way. We're gonna click on close. And our fault code is now inactive. Okay, DPF ash clean request inactive. So at this point, we are good to go. Code is cleared, we don't have a check engine light anymore. Uh, what I usually like to do is go ahead and click on clear all. All your fault codes will be cleared. You shouldn't have anything illuminated on your dash, as you can see. You are gonna get the ABS light every once in a while. I don't know why, but the Detroit software will trigger that ABS light. But once you get rolling, uh, I think a little bit over five miles per hour, that ABS light should go away and you don't have any more issues. So again, check engine light gone. We, took, we have taken care of the fault code and that's pretty much it for this video. So guys, if you have any questions, as always, definitely hit me up. Uh, don't be afraid to ask me. I try to answer as many as I can. Uh, and that's pretty much, again, all set. Guys, don't forget, give it a like, thumbs up. You know what to do, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day.